Welcome back everybody. This is our video solution to problem six from quiz two, fall 2023, math 307 here at Cal State Fullerton. In this problem we have a vector space V over a field F in which, oh wow, we've seen this condition in uh, our video solution to problem three. Here this field has the property that one plus one does not equal zero. And we're going to assume that u, w is linearly independent. So last time we assumed that u and w spanned the vector space v. Now we assume it's linearly independent. And we want to prove that this same uh, kind of modified list, u plus w, u minus w, is also linearly independent. So the straightforward standard way to do this is we go back to our theorem after the definition of linear independence. And we show that the zero vector can be written uniquely in ter as a linear combination of u plus w and u minus w. Now we already know you can write the zero vector as the trivial linear combination where you just use zero as all your scalars. So we're going to try to show that that's actually the only one. So we start by saying assume uh, a and b are in the field f such that a times u plus w plus b times u minus w is equal to zero. Okay, so I have a u plus w, u minus w representation of zero. But I could distribute this and write it actually as a linear combination of u and w. So how many u's do I have? Well, let's see, I have a times u, and I have b times u. So I have a plus b u's. And how many w's do I have? Well, let's see, I have a w's, and I have minus b w's. So this will be a minus b times w. And so this now is a u w representation of 0. Hmm. What did we know, though, about u and w? Ah, right. The assumption is that u, w is linearly independent. And that implies that there is a unique u, w representation of 0. Well, that, of course, the unique one is the trivial one. So since u, w is linearly independent, we conclude that a plus b has to be 0, and a minus b has to be 0. Hmm. Well, I think we could solve this pretty easily. Uh, this bottom one tells me that a equals b. And so this top equation then implies that, well, I can replace a b with a. So I get a plus a is equal to 0. Ah. But let's see, a plus a is equal to 0, right? Doesn't that mean that 2a is equal to 0? Why is it 2? Oh, right, because it's 1 plus 1. And again, you see, this is where we're using this condition that 1 plus 1 does not equal 0. So 2 does not equal 0. That's going to mean that 2 is invertible. So 2a is equal to 0. But now I can multiply both sides by 2 inverse. And of course, 2 inverse by 0 is equal to 0. And 2 inverse times 2a is just equal to a. So a is equal to 0. But a was also equal to b, so b is equal to 0. And there we go. We've just shown that the original coefficients in our u plus w, u minus w representation of 0 are actually the 0 coefficients. Therefore, 0 has a unique u plus w, u minus w representation. So 0 has a unique u plus w, u minus w representation. And therefore, u plus w, u minus w is linearly independent. All right, everybody. We'll see you next time with our video solutions to quiz 3.